beautiful soul. Welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. So we're gonna be talking about this week ahead, of course, but we're gonna be switching it up and doing it in podcast form. For those of you guys that don't know, I launched a new podcast called Bahati Life Podcast. Woo! <laughs> and within the first three days of me sharing it with you guys, it has been top trending on Apple Podcasts, number one podcast for spirituality, which has been such a great honor and a blessing. Of course, I'm not going to leave the Bahati Life YouTube channel because I love it here. I love being able to connect with you guys. I actually have a lot of really exciting things in store for Bahati Life YouTube that extends way beyond what we normally do, what we normally talk about, which is pick a card readings, astrology updates, and astrology breakdown. I am just really feeling called and excited to share more of my life with you guys, more of the behind the scenes type things that goes way deeper than just the esoteric, the astrology, the tarot, the intuitive, but into the lifestyle, which has a lot of that. Obviously, you guys, I live and breathe this. It's my world, but I wanna share more of it with you. So having said that, let me know what you would like to see in it, so I can add that on in addition to what I'm already kind of planning. But check out the podcast form. I'm going to upload it in this video. I'm gonna also link the podcast itself down below. You can see it on all major podcasting platforms. I'm gonna to continue to upload the podcast in a YouTube format because I know that you guys love the YouTube platform and you don't wanna see me migrate away from that and I don't want to migrate from it either, okay? So let's go ahead and dive into the week ahead, what it is that I'm seeing, and I will see you not only on YouTube, but in the podcasting realms. Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Oh, hey, love. Welcome back to another Body Life podcast. This is the third episode, and we're going to be diving into the week ahead. So let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and roll our sleeves up, pull these charts, pull some cards and see what's up. So first things first, do you guys remember last week I was telling you that the further we got into that week, the weirder, the wonkier information would get and would seem? This is because Mercury was nearing and getting closer and closer to Neptune and Neptune is a planet of illusion and fantasy and you know, high hopes and high thinking and high vibration and Mercury ruling the mind and our thoughts and our words and how we express ourselves, if it's not exactly conjunct, it starts to get very hazy. This is where I want and need to hear you guys' feedback. Number one, because I don't know if you guys know this about me, but astrology is my passion, intuitive sciences and esoteric studies and the occult is something that, is that I obviously love. And I'm obsessed with and very passionate about it. I don't like to say obsessed, but very passionate. I'm always studying. I'm always growing. And I want to hear you guys' experiences. So can you do me a favor? And if you can, tweet at me on Twitter or um, hit me up on Instagram. Both of those accounts are at Bahati Life. And let me know how last week was for you. So I don't want to like drop um, thoughts into your head, but... Just from my own research, when Mercury was nearing close conjunction with Neptune, which we're going to be seeing this week, it starts, like I was saying, it starts to get very, very foggy. It starts to get very wonky. This would have been last week's energy, though. And I know that I'm talking about last week and this week, but again, sorry, just, you know, entertain me for a minute, please. <laughs> how are you guys feeling and how did you guys navigate through the nearness? As Mercury got closer and closer to Neptune, what was the week like for you? For example, did you have issues with decision making? Did you have um, conflict with other people as far as, you know, misunderstandings? The closer Mercury gets to Neptune, the planet of illusion and fantasy and high hopes and idealistic thinking and feeling and visualization, it almost kind of channels like a Mercury retrograde type vibe where 
communication breakdowns happen, the mind gets clouded and foggy, communication and and the things that we're saying, the things that we're hearing, it's it's kind of like lost in translation. Did you guys experience that? No matter how sharp and how focused you might have started off at the very beginning of the week, you would have started to trail off. This is when we actually need to start factoring taking in breaks, to be honest with you. If you are in work or areas of your life that require sharp focus and sharp decision making. However, if you're an artist, if you're an intuitive, if you're an empath, and those are things that you work with on the daily, your skills would have been highlighted and I don't want to say exalted, but they would showcase themselves more than they normally do. Also, if you're a psychologist, a counselor, or you use spoken or written word in order to help heal people, this aspect would have been beneficial to you, big time. Big time beneficial to you, your clients, your art, whatever it is that you're creating. So definitely you guys let me know how this um, aspect was working for you. And the way to do that is by letting me know your rising sign and your sun sign. And if you guys have any questions about that, then you can go ahead and shoot me an email at info at and I'll be more than happy to answer that for you, you know, if the need and the demand is there. But we're talking about this week, right? So this week, Mercury is perfectly conjunct Neptune. And this is when astrology kind of, you know, flip-flops a little bit. Because how do we go from the wonkiness of Mercury nearing Neptune to a beam of light as Mercury conjuncts Neptune? And what that means is that Mercury and Neptune are sitting directly on top of each other. How this shifts from being confusing and wonky into really strong and powerful concentrated energy is because these two energies of the planets merge together, they synchronize, they align, they harmonize. So when they're working so strongly together, they are joining forces, we feel the benefit of that here on Earth instead of them nearing towards each other, still trying to figure out the balance, things are getting kind of muddled. Where does Neptune begin? Where does Mercury end? Like where it's like it's like watching ink or watercolors bleeding into each other. You, there's, it's hard to define what is what. With this energy, you still want to be cautious in the pursuit of your affairs, whatever those affairs are. So you want to check, double check, triple check facts. Why? Because Neptune, again, it's not trying to do this on purpose, but it's just the energy that it rules. It has a very excellent way of painting things into something other than what they are. And that's not deceptive in a way that it's evil or malicious in intent. It's just sometimes we see things through rose-colored glasses. And that could be a good thing, but it can also be problematic. So the way to do that is to really ground yourself to stop center and check in with your vibes. Checking in with your vibes is something that as intuitive beings, as empaths and gifted healers, we should be doing this all the time and and we should be practicing it pretty often because it helps us to strengthen our gifts instead of kind of getting swallowed up in the energy of the world, which happens a lot (laughs) with us sensitives and us intuitives. But Even more so, when we have aspects like this, Mercury conjunct Neptune, this is an opportunity for this energy to really be easy and effortless instead of it being an uphill battle or we're struggling with it. Why? Because the energy is already wired and tuned into you working with your intuitive gifts or you working with your ability to heal or your ability to use your words in a way that is meaning significant, powerful, and cathartic, or even creative. As I'm looking at the entirety of the chart, We have planets that are in these watery depths of signs, for example, Pisces. Then we have the energy of fire, this enthusiasm, this excitement as Sun and Chiron and Venus are sitting in the sign of Aries. Then we have the breakdown of Saturn's weight, you know, just pushing and pounding its fists on the world as it is that we know it. So it's very transformative. It's very transitional. Our planet is getting revolutionized. And then Pluto sitting in the the root, the Earth, (laughs) with uh, Capricorn here is breaking down and almost decomposing the foundations. Oh, and then we have 
Mars sitting in Gemini just bouncing around like it took two shots of espresso when it should have only had one, you know? So these are the energies of the planets that is that we're working with. The best way to vibe with this and the best way to make it work for you is to factor in pauses like an hour and a half, you guys. An hour and a half of you just disconnecting for everything for a minute just to get out of your head, get your thoughts onto paper, create a plan to breathe, to walk, to exercise, whatever it is that works for you in order to make sure that you're not getting pulled into all these different directions and that in it, you know, you are hearing me tell you, listen, Mercury conjunct Neptune is placing these rose colored glasses on your face. So yeah, you're looking at things from such an, an an interesting lens and yes it may be beautiful or yes it may be weird and that is your reality that is your perspective but is it real is it true and that leads us to the next conversation which we have to talk about this another day like what is real anyways it's our perspective like how we shape things but what I don't want is for you guys to make permanent lasting decisions based upon how things look right now At the same time, I'm saying that with all of these major planets moving direct right now, don't be afraid to make permanent lasting decisions. Don't be afraid to be an advocate for yourself. Don't be afraid to tap deeper into your masculine energy. And I'll talk about that a little later on in the podcast. Why? Because these planets, these major planets are all moving direct. They are all moving forward. If we know that, we want to be empowered by that to take the time out to read the fine print, to ask the hard hitting questions, to check, double check, and triple check our facts, and to push back as needed. Your intuition, like I said, is highlighted right now. It's big time highlighted this week. The downloads, the information downloads that it is that we're getting from spirit, our higher selves, are clear and ringing as a bell. But at the same time, as those messages are coming through, what we might be looking at in the physical realms, like us working with other human beings, may not be as precise. So having said that, your intuition is going to be an awesome compass. It usually and should normally be, but more so this week than ever. Another important factor that I must talk to you guys about is what I think a lot of astrologers would have probably started off (laughs) talking to you guys about, but you guys know I go with the flow of the chart and I don't follow the rules. Rules are made for breaking. We're meant to strike out and do things differently in order to make a, a big impact and that's what we're doing here. Obs, obs. But okay, so sun conjunct Chiron, right? Obviously the sun is moving through the sign of Aries right now. We're in spring season. This is new birth, fresh starts, new ventures. Sun is moving through the sign of Aries, meets up with Venus, meets up with Chiron. All of these planets, these personal planets are deeply felt and are focusing on your healing, your ego, your identity. And this is another thing where this time that I'm seeing you guys being called to take, myself included, because I'm under the same transits as you, we're all just kind of walking each other home as as they say, you know, this time that you're taking for yourself is really going to help you to strengthen your backbone. Now, as I'm saying that, Keep in mind, Mars is moving through the sign of Gemini, Sun is moving through Aries, so there is this, I don't want to say combative energy, but it's an easily provoked type of energy. It's like, would you say punk? You know what I mean? Like a, whoa, all right, calm down, chill. I'm just in Target right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody chill. So it's it's it can be very quick acting, quick thinking, and easily triggered. It can be very easily provoked. And it can be very unstable. And when Sun conjuncts Chiron, we have this amazing opportunity this week. This is going to be happening on the 29th at 4.08 a.m., but you're going to feel it throughout the remainder of this of this week. We have this amazing opportunity to focus our identity and our self on our own internal healing. At the same time, Sun is masculine. Aries energy is masculine. And the two of them together are really trying to help you to get a a stronger backbone. This means that you're not easily upset by the bullshit of other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As high vibrational people, you don't need to explain yourself, defend yourself to everyone or everything. And there's also aspects within yourself that you might be combating with, that you might not accept, that you might feel like, okay, this is the only way that I can be defined in order for me to be strong or in order for me to be authentic or in order for me to be solid. That is simply not the case. 
That is simply not the case. So your identity, your ego, whether you see yourself as a healer or a rebel or whatever it is, this is the opportunity this week for you to gain deeper understanding and clarity into yourself. And that can allow you you know, deep cathartic healing. At the same time, it can open the door for problems. You'll start to see and address certain things that you may not want to take with you in this new cycle of growth that we are all in right now. Masculine energy, Aries is very masculine. The sun is very masculine. It wants you to feel confident and wants you to feel brave. But the biggest word that's coming through to me is self-assured. This means that you're not looking for other people for confirmation and clarity. Some of you guys are like, no, that's not me. I I know who I am. I'm an independent woman. I'm an independent man. And I call the shots and I'm not. But at the same time, what do you think you're doing when you're following you know, these certain Instagram accounts or you're looking on Pinterest to see what other people are doing and then you enter into this mind space and this energy of comparison? Well, why are they doing it that way? So it's almost like you're taking a solution or doing research on what others are doing that you might be interested in or that may be inspiring to you and then somehow kind of twisting it and turning it into, well, why am I not doing it that way? Like I'm kind of messing myself up in a way that feels judgmental. And that's what we don't want. That's what spirit doesn't want for you. So again, remember, Mercury conjunct Neptune. And I didn't give you guys the exact dates of this, but I'll give it to you now. March 29th at 11.23 p.m. But again, just because those are the exact dates doesn't mean that it's just that day. We're going to be feeling this all this week. Mercury conjunct Neptune paints again this idealistic image of the way that we want and wish things to be but again everybody has a different perspective and everyone's looking at it through a different lens so you want to keep checking in with yourself one of the last things i want to talk to you guys about is the fact that venus is sextile saturn this week this is going to be the 30th at 11 46 a.m but again we're going to be feeling it all throughout the remainder of this week venus does not feel her best when she's moving to the sign of aries when she sextile saturn even though that seems like a very positive transit and it sounds very positive because sextile energy is supportive remember we're working with energy and there's no such thing as good or bad it's just energy at the end of the day so when venus is moving through the sign of aries she can actually feel a little uncomfortable she can feel a little intimidated confidence is a big thing This is when we see us kind of slumping our shoulders or wanting to hide or we're second guessing ourselves. Meanwhile, Saturn sitting through the sign of Aquarius is doing the most with shaking things up. Even though Saturn is not notoriously known for shaking things up, the fact that it's sitting in the sign of Aquarius, which is trying to revolutionize, you know, and and be groundbreaking is showing me right now that how you identify yourself or your root or your foundation or your feelings of safety and security especially with Aquarius moving through the sign of Taurus totally reprioritizing and shifting what is valuable to you what's important to you and your money (laughs) and the economy (laughs) come on it's just kind of like you know, wonky and weird, but all of it is transformative. All of it, if you know what you're working with, it can be very powerful. It can be very life-changing. I'm just seeing this big nudge to you re-shifting your focus back into yourself at certain points of the day. If you start feeling overstimulated, if you start feeling overactive or overwhelmed or bombarded, or you notice that you're gritting your jaw or slumping your shoulders, this is a clear telltale sign that it's time for you to pause for you to breathe stretch shake let it go breathe stretch shake let it go breathe stretch shake let it go guys remember that song (laughs) and reconnect back to your center back to your core because you want to be your biggest advocate you want to Spend more time checking in with yourself and being happy with yourself. That's the only person that you have to answer to. Unless you believe in a higher power, a God, or a higher self, then you have to answer to that as well. But at the end of the day, only you can answer those questions. Am I on the right path? Am I missing something in the fine print? One of the last and final things that it is that I want to talk to you guys about, and it's not necessarily me, it's I just really feel this strong push and nudge from spirit, is this idea of moving forward with sun venus chiron moving through the sign of aries aries is notoriously the start of new beginnings and the start of the new cycle it's very like wheel of fortune fool card type energy mixed with the emperor type vibes if you're into tarot as we are moving through this week spirit is clearly telling me that they are going to guide you with hints gifts signs confirmation 
that you may need to shift your direction and shift your sales just a little bit. And some of you guys, when you hear, okay, we are moving forward, sometimes moving forward means taking a step back. So Spirit is clearly telling me to tell you guys right now that sometimes, oh, and look at the clock, 11, 11 a.m., not even kidding. Sometimes taking a step back or taking a pause or deciding, okay, wait, I am clearly being called to say no to this or I am clearly being called to say that this is a maybe. When you are guided to do that, that is actually you moving forward. Even though the word itself, this is why I have such a problem with words and how we use words and the power of words. Words are everything. When you use the word forward, you think forward momentum. We're moving in one direction and we're not looking back. But sometimes not looking back or moving forward means cutting yourself away or cutting yourself off of dead end things dead in relationships, or things that are not a vibrational match. And again, with Mercury conjunct Neptune right now, what are they saying? What are you saying? What is the vibe? What is the tone? There is a heightened state of intuition and spirit is clearly downloading information in ways that is easy and effortless. So you should be plugging into this. You should be channeling this. And it's going to take a lot of boldness. It's going to take a lot of confidence. It's going to take a lot of risk. But the reward but the reward. What I'm looking at, I just started looking for the part of fortune where our, our major luck comes from in this week. Part of fortune is sitting in the sign of Neptune. So the more that we're listening to our intuition, the more that we are guided, the more gifts, blessings, abundance we will receive. Trust it. And don't look for it in expected areas. Don't look for it in the same places that is that you always look for buried treasure. Why? Because you hit those parts already. Step outside of your normal comfort zone. Explore different territories explore different options explore different realities jupiter in aquarius is doing the absolute most here with keeping us in a state of expecting the unexpected and i don't know about you guys but i'm ready for a change hit me up on instagram and twitter at bahati life and let's keep this conversation going i'll see you soon